Hello everyone, welcome to another video um, by me, Herring Games, of course. Now, this video is a little bit different. Um, I'm actually reading a fan fiction. In case you didn't know, I'm a brony, right? They're pretty cool. But um, this fan fiction is called um, Pony in Hyrule, and I'm going to read the entire trilogy. Um, so, let's start. And by the way, I didn't write it. Totally didn't. It's not very good, by the way. Chapter 1 Fluttershy had just woken up in her cottage. It was a beautiful day. She stretched and got out of bed. Good morning, Angel, she said to her bunny. He ignored her. She got some bread out of her cupboard and carefully sliced it with her kitchen knife. She put it on a plate and started to eat. After she had finished, she picked up her saddlebag and loaded some bits into it. Okay, Angel, I'm just going to get some groceries, so you be good now, she said to Angel. He turned away and bounced off. Just as she closed the door, there was a blinding white light in front of her. She stepped back, startled. Stop it! Stop it! She heard from the light, and then the light exploded, dragging her into it. A saddlebag fell off as she tried to escape. She tried to flap away, but it was no use. She was falling through a void full of the whole spectrum of colours. Then... Darkness. Fluttershy woke suddenly. She was lying on her back and hastily got up. She had many injuries on her, and she was at the bottom of the hill. Her wing had some bones sticking out of it. She guessed she must have rolled down it. Wh where am I? She said to herself. She was very scared. She was in a forest, but not the Everfree. The trees were too thin to be the Everfree, Everfree forest. She curled up against a tree and started crying. P please help me, <laughs> any pony, <laughs> please. <sighs> please help me, oh, I need to get... Two days later, Vio walked angrily out of the house. He had, he had had enough of Blue and Green arguing all the time. He needed a nice walk in the forest to calm himself down. The forest always looked nice at sunset. They have both seen so cranky ever since that spell went wrong two days ago, thought Vio as he strolled through the forest at a slow pace. He had been walking for a long time when he stopped. I should get home now, it's turning night. He turned around as he heard movement in the bushes ahead. His eyes scanned the area swiftly. Nothing. He walked closer to the bushes and peered through. There was a clearing in it. There was a clearing, and in it stood a butter yellow pegasus with long flowing pink hair. Wow, a pegasus, Vio said to himself quietly. He could tell it was a female. She just looked female. Vio had read a lot about pegasi, but had never actually seen one. Vio really liked interesting creatures, and pegasi were definitely interesting. Vio pulled an apple out of his pocket and inspected the pegasus closer. She had a picture of three butterflies on her right flank. Strange. She looked tired and had many scratches on her body, and there was a large gash on her wing. She's hurt. She needs care. Vio tapped the ground with a large rock to catch the Pegasus' attention. She turned around quickly and started backing away. I'm not gonna hurt you, Vio said. He held out the apple. She still looked frightened. He put the apple on the floor and backed away slightly. The Pegasus slowly walked towards him. As she got closer, Vio backed away. She started to eat. She looked hungry. As she gulped down the last pieces of apple, she walked towards Vio. Thank you so much. I thought I was going to starve, she said in a high-pitched voice. Vio froze. Did you just speak? Vio said, shocked. Well, um, yes I did. Most ponies can talk. Vio was finding all of this hard to take in, even for him. So, you're a pony, Vio said. Um, yes, and I am a Pegasus pony, she said. You look hurt, Vio said. Yes, it hurts a lot, she said. Vio saw more cuts and bruises on her. How did you get this badly injured? Vio inquired. Well, two days ago, I think. I was just leaving my house to buy groceries, Vio cut across her. You mean, you have a house? Um... Yes, most ponies have houses, she replied. So where where do you come from? Ponies are just like Hylians, Vio said. Um, what are Hylians? Oh, 
I'm a Hylian. It's the name of the species, Thio answered. Well, in that case, yes, said the pony. Oh yeah, sorry for interrupting you, Thio said, scratching the back of his head. Oh, no problem, she said. So, as I left my house in the morning, a huge white light appeared in front of me, and then I heard a voice shouting, Stop it! Stop it! After that, the light exploded and dragged me here, she finished, and I think I got these injuries from falling down a hill. Vaya sat down on a nearby stump and sighed, putting his head in his hand. I'm sorry, but that was me. I found an old book in the town's library. I borrowed it and took it home. I looked inside and saw some old spells, incantations. I couldn't help myself, Fire said. I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to, um, hang on a second, this, this isn't right. Um, let me just rephrase that previous bit. Let me just, yeah, what? Okay. Fire sat down on a nearby stump and sighed, putting his head in his hand. I'm sorry, but that was me. I found this old book once. I, I can't remember how I got it, it just... I looked inside and saw some old spells, incantations. I couldn't help myself, Vio said. I'm sorry. That's okay, she said. After all, it was just an accident. Vio got up and stroked her mane. That's so nice of you, Vio said. Oh yeah, my name's Vio. Nice to meet you, he said. The Pegasus replied, I'm f Fluttershy, she said. Fluttershy? That's a nice name. Now, you should stay at my place until those wounds heal, Vaya said. Oh, no, I couldn't, said Fluttershy. Yes, you must. Have you been wandering around this forest for the past two days looking for anything to eat? Vaya said, smiling. Well, yes, I suppose, she said, looking at the ground. Come on, then, he said. Let's get you home. Just as Vaya said that, he was greeted by a bokoblin stood behind him. He had left his sword back at the house. He raised his fists and readied for combat. The bokoblin ran at him with its machete and that horrible sound it made. He ducked and kicked it with his legs swiftly and smoothly. To his horror, the monster lurched forward to Fluttershy and in attempts to get away, slipped and fell on her legs. Her forelegs were now bleeding badly. The bokoblin stood above her, raising its machete. She closed her eyes, waiting for the blow. Vio ran as fast as he could, grabbed the Bokoblin's head from behind, and SNAP! It fell to the side, its head the wrong way round. Damn, that is thrilling narration right there. She opened her eyes and was immediately sick on the floor. Hey, it's okay, said Vio comfortingly. It's dead now. She tried not to look at the dead monster lying on the floor. Vio picked up a leaf and wiped her mouth with it. A leaf? <laughs> All right, he said. You need some medical treatment when we get home. Vio lifted her onto his back, she couldn't walk because she fell, and started walking along the beaten path towards home. So then, um, that concludes chapter one of Pony and Hyrule. <laughs> um, if you liked the fan art, uh, I drew it. Like, 